Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Just want to come and give our word today from the Lord. Just being obedient to the voice of God. When you say speak, I just speak. And uh, today I want to speak about I want to speak about grace. Uh, because a lot of people don't understand what grace is all about. A lot of people have been taught a lot of different things. You know, a lot of people been in, in the era and for us when it comes to grace. You know, a lot of people thinking that grace is something that you abuse. Thank you, Lord. It's something they're thinking that you can just sin freely and just do what you want to do. And the Lord will forgive you and save you at the same time. But today I want to bring to you and open your eyes up into the truth concerning grace. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Amen. Just take a ride with me today. Amen. And grab your Bibles. Amen. And read it along. Open up that power so you can receive this truth. It's only going to make you free from sin. That's all it's going to do. It's going to make you free if you take heed to it. If you want to be saved, you take heed to this truth. We're going to start with Ephesians. Mm-hmm. Chapter number two. Uh, I'm gonna focus on verse eight, but I wanna I wanna start with verse. I just start with verse one. Amen. Ephesians chapter two, verse one. It simply reads, "And ye have he quickened," mm -hmm, which means to make alive. Thank you, Lord. Because when you was in sin, the Bible says the wage of sin is death. Amen. But through Christ, you get made alive. You get free from sin. You get saved. Thank you, Lord. It says, "He have he quickened." Who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. It say, wherein in the time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Mm -hmm. You walked in sin. You did what the devil wanted you to do. And it says, according to the prince of the power of the air. Talking about the devil. Talking about Satan. It say, in the spirit that now working in the children of disobedience. We know Satan, the people who are disobedient, and who Satan working in. You know, if you're fornicating, you if you a homosexual and you lying, you know, Satan is working in you, amen, you're a child of disobedience, you were in sin, mm -hmm. then it said verse 3, among whom also we all have had our conversations in times past, and the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, it say, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, he said, but God Mm -hmm. Is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us. Thank you, Lord. He say, even when we were dead in our sins, have quickened us together with Christ. It says, by grace, mm -hmm. ye are saved. It's not by law, but it's by grace, which is the gospel of Jesus, that we are saved. There's no other way you can get saved but by grace. You can't get saved under law. Under law, they could not be made perfect. The Bible says that. That's why Christ can't make a new covenant, amen. So we can be made perfect through the sacrifice, sacrifice of Christ's body. Which now we made free from sin. We be perfect now. Mm -hmm. Then it says, it says, and have raised us up together and have made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It say that in the ages to come he may show the exceeding riches of his grace. Thank you Lord for your amazing grace. His grace and his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. You understand grace comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is grace. Amen. His word is grace. The gospel is what saves us. Amen. That's the grace that, that calls us into salvation. We're going to talk about that in a minute. He may be sitting there. What is he talking about? Let, just, just keep walking with me. We're going to get through these scriptures. Amen. I'm speaking nothing but the Bible says. I'm speaking nothing but the truth. It says right here in verse 8. It says, for by grace. There it is again. That's the second time he's telling you the same passage. It says, by grace are ye saved. It's nothing that you can be saved by. Amen. The Bible said there's the way that seems right, but therein leads to death. You might think your way is right because it's not grace. You might think your religion is right, but if it ain't grace... Then your weight seems right, but when you die, it's going to lead to death. You're going to go to hell. Because the only way you can be saved is by grace. You need to understand that. If you didn't know, you know right now. 
He said, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Mm -hmm. Faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. By faith, I'm walking this walk, knowing that if I hold on, knowing I got baptized in Jesus' name, and my sins got forgiven, and got filled with the Holy Ghost power, and living holy out of sin, that when I die, I know by faith, according to this word, that I will and I shall be saved. That's what this word says. Amen. That's what faith's all about. It say, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, let any man should boast. You don't have to work for this. Amen. It's already given through Christ. Amen. It's a gift. You just have to receive it. Amen. By believing on the name of Jesus. Okay. Now let's go right here to Titus chapter 2. This is going break down what grace is really is. Because a lot of people don't understand what grace is. They think that, you know, grace is something that, you know, I just say I believe in Jesus, you know, and I live in a kind of way. That's what religious folks do. You just go in, you know, have some church. Oh, church was good. But church so good, you leaving out church the same. Church couldn't be that good because you should be leaving out delivered. Now that's a good church when you leaving out crying, repeating your heart out to God. You leaving out not gay no more, not fornicate, not lying. Now, that's some good church. People how long these feel good message you getting? You coming in church the same? Leaving out because you can't talk lies. The Bible says the truth shall make you free. If you ain't free because you haven't took heed to the truth. Mm -hmm. Then the Bible says, okay, let's go right here. Let's focus on this grace though. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's a Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. It simply says that it's going to explain what grace is all about. Just listen to it. If your pastor never talked to this, then you're under the truth today. It says, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God. There it is. It says, Bring it forth. Mm -hmm. It's bringing it now. Bring it forth salvation. So the grace of God bring it forth salvation. It says, It have appeared mm -hmm, to all men. What are you, Asian? What are you, what, what are you Japanese? You know, what are you, black, white? Pink, purple, it really don't matter. It said, it said grace hell appeared to all men. That means everybody can be saved now. For the Bible said, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then verse 12, it said teaching us. Okay, now grace teaching us. Okay, so it's that you know what grace teach. Keep walking with me. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness. Okay, so grace teaching us to deny ungodliness. That means teaching us to deny unholiness. Amen. We're talking about sin. Mm -hmm. He say, and worldly lust. Okay, it teaches us to deny worldly lust. Did you know that? You know the day. It say, we should live soberly, righteously. And godly in this present world. He didn't say a lot of people get to mix us. See, this is what people get to see that. I ain't going to be perfect till Christ come back. Can't nobody be perfect. Well, first of all, let's see what the Bible says. Not what men say. The Bible says to, to be you perfect for which your heavenly father is perfect. That's what the Bible told you to be. And that's what you have to be. People say, well, I'm not going to be perfect till Christ come. Well, first of all, think about what deception you're saying. Think about what you're saying. So what you're saying is, um, if, if you're not going to be perfect till Christ come back, then that means that you're going to be in sin. Because you say, I ain't going to be perfect till Christ come back. Well, first of all, on people who are going to be saved, it's the ones who is perfect, which means to be without sin. The ones who have reached perfection, the ones who are living out of sin. Those are the ones who are going to see salvation because only those who are found without sin will be saved. Did you know that? If you saying that you ain't going to be perfect till Christ come back, that means you're going to have sin in you. If you be found with sin, you're going to be found guilty. How are you going to be saved when you got sin and you when Christ come back? The purpose of believing in him and his word is to get free from sin so he come back. You can have no sin in you. And you can be saved. That's what the Bible says. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. You got to be found without a spot, without a wrinkle, or without a blemish when Christ come back. And you be found with any sin according to the Bible, you're going to hell. It don't matter what your pastor said, what your mama, what your grandma. If they saying it, they a devil, they a false prophet, and they a liar. And the truth ain't in them. Now, we see that the Bible says that the grace of God, verse 12, teaches us that deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We got to deny sin. Did you know that? We got to deny this flesh, this worldly stuff. We got to deny this. And the Bible said that we should, it, it said that we should live. That means you have to live. What? Soberly. Righteous. That means you got to be holy. 
You can't be walking in sin, serving God. That ain't what grace teach. It teaches you to be solely righteousness and godly, living upright, living holy. In this present, that means right now. Present world means right now. He didn't say when Christ come back, he said right now. In this present world, meaning this world we live in right now. You have to live holy right now. That's what the grace of God teaches you. To be holy and don't teach you to be filthy. That's not the doctrine of Christ. Jesus ain't preached that nor Paul. What Jesus preached? Perfection. His apostles, they, brought, they taught perfection. They taught to live out of sin to be perfect. And neither one of them said that you can live in sin and still be saved. The only people who say that is religion, doctors of men. Those are called doctors of devil, false doctrine. It, you can't find the Bible. If you can find it, please inbox me. But you can't find it, so don't even try, because I already know. There's not in there. Then it says verse 14. I mean verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. He said 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Mm -hmm. So now we got a problem now. He said that deliver us from all iniquity. Now, how is it that some people are saying that they say and they still got sin in them? Oh, well, I can't be prayed. Well, first of all, he came to redeem you from all your iniquity. He ain't come to deliver you from fornication, to deliver you from, from um, having um, adultery, lying. But you, but keep, but but you still gay. Now nah, he can't deliver you from being gay. Also, he can't deliver from all your sins. Not some sin, all iniquity. All the people who are saying, the Bible said, those who are born of God don't commit sin. The people who are truly saved is the ones who have been delivered. The Bible said, deliver me to be what? To be made free from all sin. The prince delivered. They don't have no sin in them. If you have sin in you. You need to be delivered. That means you're not saved. He said, who gave himself for us, verse 14, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. He said, all iniquity. You need to understand that. And purify, mm -hmm, that means cleanse, unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now we understand what grace is all about. We understand what grace teaches now. So we understand that grace don't teach us to keep sinning. But teach us to be holy instead in this present world. To be perfect in this present world. Not to be sinful, but to be holy. Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Romans chapter 6. Let me hasten. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6. Let's go through this briefly. I'm going to just briefly explain this because I got a lot to cover. Romans chapter 6. Now this is something a lot of people are thinking that they can still continue to commit sin and still be saved. Thinking this all well. Oh God forgive me. You know that's what grace is. Now, we're, now, now, we, now we, we just learned what grace is all about. Grace told you to, to live righteously. To live soberly in this present world now. So now we know that we can't live in sin no more. Since we know that. Now we can understand this scripture once we read it. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. He said what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Shall we continue to commit sin? That grace may abound. So grace, so since we got grace, we, so we keep on sinning because we know we got grace. It's going to forgive us for our sins. The best way to sin. Can I keep sinning because I know Christ is going to forgive for my sins? And verse 2 says, because a lot of people think they can do that. But verse 2 going to rebuke you. It says, verse 2, God forbid. That means no. You don't supposed to keep on continuing sin. You can't um, continue to sin and willfully sin thinking it's okay. Because why? Check verse 2 out. God forbid. He said, how shall we? He's talking about the people that say it. ain't talking about the worldly people. He's talking about people who believe in God, who believe in Christ. He said, how shall we that are dead to sin? When something dead, that means it can't move no more. It can't do what it was doing. You know, whatever that person was doing, they dead. It's over with. They can't move. They can't talk. Can't breathe. Can't do nothing. So if you dead to sin, he said, that are dead to sin live any longer therein. So if you dead to sin, how is you still living in sin? You're supposed to be dead. Your flesh is supposed to be dead. So if you dead to sin, why is you still sinning? Mm -hmm. Now that's a, that's a question to ask. Verse 3. Know ye not 
that so many of us as was baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized to his death. He said those who was baptized into Christ, you was baptized to his death. That means you die when you want that water. Your flesh is supposed to die. You shouldn't be walking in any sin. That's what the Bible says. I'm going to go on to um, skip to verse 6. It say, knowing this, that our old man talking about the sin for nature. And that person that you were before you got saved. For you came to the Lord. He said, our old man is crucified me, put to death with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That's what baptism for. Baptism destroys sin. Did you know that? When you get baptized, you die to your flesh. So when you die to your flesh, that means you die to sin. So your sins have been destroyed. You no longer in sin because you dead to it. He said the body of sin might be destroyed. Then henceforth we should not serve sin. The Bible is not. Now everything I'm reading is going against sin. It's telling you not to sin. Don't serve sin. But a lot of people still thinking they can sin. Because they've been seduced by doctrines of devils. They've been lied to. But don't read you the gospel. It's the only way you don't get saved by the truth. For it says verse 7. For he that is dead is free from sin. The question is a lot of people just not that just, just haven't died to their flesh. They got off the water and got baptized as a wet devil that they was. Because they don't understand when you get baptized, you die to your flesh. This is serious business. When you get on that water, you get baptized in Jesus' name, you're supposed to rise up a new creature. You're not supposed to be walking in your flesh. But you got to have the Holy Ghost power to be born again in order to walk holy, to be holy. But specifically right here in verse 7, he's talking about baptism. He said, he that is dead and free from sin. You got to kill all your flesh. That means your sins. Once you kill all your flesh, then you'll be free from sin. How you know you're free from sin? Well, you're not commit sin no more. That's when you're free. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's go right here to um, 1 John chapter 2. So, now we know what grace is not nothing that we can play with. It's not, no, no, it's not a crutch that we can use, that we can sin and go to God freely like it's nothing. No, that's not what grace teaches. Teach us to be holy without sin, to be perfect. To live sober and righteous in this present world. Thank you, Lord. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. This Bible simply says, My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. Did you hear that? He's right to these people. And for he, the, the letter he writing, he said he... These things I write unto you that ye sin not. That's what I'm telling you. You should not could be commit sin at all. I'm letting you know as a real man of God, as a preacher of righteousness, as a preacher of truth, chosen by God. You should be not committing sin right now. He was warning them to not commit sin because understood when you say you don't commit sin. But then he go, he said, and if a man sin, he said, if not, oh, oh, we're going to say just go sin. Because I know you're going to sin. He didn't say that. He first started off with, I'm warning you not to commit sin. Because understood you don't supposed to be commit sin. Then he goes to say, and he said, and if any man sin, and you so happy wants to commit sin, you got weak, you, you fell short of the glory. He said, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteousness. And he is the appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. When you commit a sin, yes, you have grace to go to. Grace will cover you. Why? Because you will go and you will go repent for your sin that you committed. And you supposed to turn from it. That means that if you was an alcoholic, say if, if, if you stop, but you so happen to was to commit that sin, you just fell to the temptation. You supposed to repent and don't go back to be drinking no more. If you fornicate, you need to repent. Don't fornicate no more. Get married if you can't control yourself. For the Bible says it's better to marry than to burn. So understand that if you commit sin, you have Christ to go to. But he let you know that I'm warning you not to sin. But if you so happen to sin, which means I'm telling you, don't commit sin. I'm not encouraging sin. I'm letting you know if you sin, you have Jesus to go to to get that sin to be forgiven. You need to repent. You need to um repent and turn from that sin and keep on being holy and not commit no more sin. So then we go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Let me hasten to a close. Time running out. Hebrews chapter 10. Chapter 10. Verse 26. Understand, we got a lot of people that's, will, that's willfully sinning. They're thinking that they can sin and they're going to get away with it. But check the scripture out. It says verse 26. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. He said if we 
receive the knowledge of the truth. If we've been taught the truth and we willfully just choose the sin, so that means that you know that fornication is wrong now. You know that being gay is wrong now after reading the Bible. You know lying is wrong, that you can go to hell for that. But if you willfully continue to be gay, continue to lie, and fornicate, commit adultery, and to shed innocent blood, disobey your parents, and you know that the Bible said that's wrong, that's called willfully sin. That means you know it's wrong, but you just want to do it anyways. He says that there remaining no more sacrifice for sins. He said, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fearing in the nation which shall devour the adversary. That means that these people who willfully sin, knowing that they sin wrong, thinking that they can continue to sin and abuse grace. He said that a fearful looking for judgment, fear in the nation which shall devour the adversary. Mean these people gonna go to hell. That means Christ gonna punish them. If you are a sinner. You have become an enemy of God. You his adversary. You his enemy now. And he going to devour you. He come at me. He going to destroy you. Because when he come back this time, it ain't going to be destroyed by water. It's going to be a fire this time. You going to burn this time forever. If you willfully sin, that means you need to repent for you perish in hell playing around with this grace. It's nothing to play with. It's not a um, it's not for Tiffany to go, to go sin. It ain't for Tiffany to say, hey, you can go sin. Christ will forgive you now. I want you not to commit sin. If you sin, you got Christ to go to, but you better not play with this grace. Playing around with your sin, you're going to burn. It just told you you will if it's sin. Ain't no more sacrifice for sin. If you're doing it on purpose, ain't no way you be forgiven. You already doing it. You, you know you're doing wrong. You're just going to go to hell when you die because you don't want to obey Christ. And I'm going to close with this. 2 um, Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse 8, it say, in flaming fire, take advantage on them that know not God, and that and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When Christ comes back, he's going to take vengeance on the people who don't know God and those who are not obeying the gospel. So now you know that you can't play around with the sin. Because if you're not obeying the gospel, that means you're not living holy, that means living in sin. And you are the one who he's going to take vengeance on. He's going to destroy you. You're going to burn in hell. For it said, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of of the Lord and from the glory of his power. You're going to be destroyed. If you be found with any sin when Christ come back. Because now you know that you don't, you can't commit sin. You know grace teaches you to live holy in this present world now. You know, so now you know he teaches you to deny ungodly, which means sin. So when today you didn't know, now you know. And the worst thing for you, if you listen to this video and you walk out, you commit sin and you, and, 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 I, and you know the truth now that you can't, you'll be here on judgment day. You'll be held accountable because this same mess he gonna bring up. Oh, I didn't know he gonna bring the same mess up, and you gonna know because you just heard it now. So now it's no excuse. You can't walk out like you don't know because you know now. Revelation chapter twenty one, and I'm out of here. Chapter twenty one, verse eight. It says, verse seven. I'm gonna start at verse seven. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and will be. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, you know, people who don't believe in God, Lord, which means right now you cannot believe. Oh, I, I, I man, the way they're saying you are an unbeliever. You don't believe this word, you will go to hell. Because that means not going to be. It said the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burning with fire and brimstone. That's just driving hell, which would be the second death. The Bible told you in Luke chapter 13 verse 5, I said to repent, you would likewise perish. If you don't turn your life around, you don't repent. And do it Acts chapter 2 verse uh, 38 says, which means to repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of your sin see the Holy Ghost. If you don't walk holy and by obeying the word of God, by living out of sin, according to the Bible, if you will go to hell. If you die in sin, the Bible says, so in the flesh, you will reap corruption. That means if you live in your flesh, you're going to reap hell. But you have to sow in the spirit to reap everlasting life to be saved. In Jesus' name, I love you and I'm telling the truth. I want to see you saved. Understand that grace is not certificate to sin. But grace teaches you to deny all ungodliness and to live holy. To live righteousness, sober, and it's present. Where I mean, right now, you can live holy through the power of the Holy Ghost. But you need to be born again first in order to enter the kingdom of God. And you can be free from sin. For the Bible says he that is dead is free from sin. You got to die to that flesh. In order to get free from sin. In Jesus name. Now you know what grace means.
Now you gotta get up and do something about it and shake that devil off and get free from sin. Except you repent, you will likewise perish in hell for living your sins in Jesus' name. Amen.